should generally be aware of the conceptual parts of the heating curve. Uh, let's say we're heating water, just to make this easy. All right, so what phase is this first, uh, this part right here? Solid. Uh, this is? Melting. This is melting, so we have a liquid and a solid there. Liquid, gas, this is uh, boiling or vaporization. All right, this is delta H fusion. Let's think about it. Is it endo or exothermic as time progresses? Endo. Energy is going in to melt something. So this should be a positive number. Uh, delta H. Yeah, VAP, vaporization. Also a positive number. Okay, why, why is there no temperature change? Oh, let's label these. This number is? Zero, because that's where you have ice. So this one better be 100, where things boil for water. All right, why, when I'm boiling, is there no uh, temperature change? It's a phase, it's an enthalpy change. All the energy is going in to change the phase, but that doesn't involve a temperature change. So those are delta H's, and all these are delta T's. That's a delta T, that'd be a delta T, this would be a delta T. Okay? So those are the basic comp uh, components of a heating curve. Let's just for fun, let's have delta H of uh, deposition, is that greater or less than zero? Yeah, so deposition is going from what phase to what phase? Gas. Gas to solid, so that's removing heat, so it should be exothermic. That's going this direction. This is the opposite direction of this heating curve. This heat curve is going that way. All right, cool. Uh, let's do phase diagram along with this now. Phase diagram. I can do it at the bottom. To be able to draw any given phase, just a generic phase diagram, I should say. Label the TP triple point and the critical point. Solid, liquid, gas. Uh, the Lachis Clapron, we'll talk about in a second, describes this part of the curve. That's the vapor pressure line right there. It's an exponential line. So it's a curve, I guess. Uh, and you should be able, you should know all phase change terms. Sublimation, uh, deposition, vaporization, all those six phase change terms. And you should be able to draw uh, any, like, uh, what would this line be called? Isobar and isotherm. My isotherm, if pressure is increasing, is what phase change? What phase change is that called? Condensation. Endo or exothermic? Exo. Remove the uh, my isobar is under if it's decreasing in temperature is undergoing one phase change. Deposition, we just said that was less than zero. So things like that. Uh, a typical other way if you're not drawing it is we give you the triple point and then we ask you questions about it based on the triple point. So we give you that triple point and then we give you another point, we ask you, is this a solid, a liquid, or a gas? So you just know relative from the triple point which direction you're going. All right. Uh, related to that, let's do vapor pressure. And I want to show you uh, something my reader hasn't quite come in my class yet, but I think it's kind of helpful for this topic. Okay. Since, since someone asked about, this is page 48, if you do have my reader, 
Okay. There are, by the time you take your exam, four ways to determine vapor pressure. There, so you should know, be able to identify which way we're talking about. If you have one component and one state, so basically one compound, okay, one compound, one state, you're going to use the ideal gas law. We did a problem like that in our class. If you have one component but two states, that means a pressure temperature and another pressure temperature, two states. Okay. This is only one pressure and temperature. This would be two, two points, use a cautious clap rock. Okay, what we haven't got to yet uh, in my class, Rawls Law or Dalton's Law was 2A. Rawls Law, you have two compounds or two components, two or more, you can have more than two, and one state, one temperature, one pressure, then you're going to use Rawls Law. We'll see that next class, tomorrow for my class. Intermolecular forces, remember that has vapor pressure in it. We'll talk about example in a bit too. Well, you got two or more components there, but it's qualitative, no numbers. But you're trying to determine based on the intermolecular force, which one has the higher or lower vapor pressure. So those are the four types of vapor pressure problems. Uh, I think this would be true for the other classes too, as far as I can think of any examples. Is there, you'd have to discern what type you're doing depending on how many compounds you have and how many points, how many pressure temperature points you have. Okay? Alright, so let's do specifically what's asked this one and this one. So let's start with Clausius Clapp Law. Clausius Clapp Law is one compound or one component, two states. Different ways that you can write this equation. Uh, so if you're from a different class, it might be written differently. It's the same equation, so don't freak out. Just the way I write it, same thing. Okay. Uh, so you're going to see two temperatures, two pressures. Let's say we have water. Let's do an example. Let's say we have water, and I want to know the vapor pressure at 50 degrees C. All right, let's set that up. So let's call this T2 and let's call this P2. I'm going to add 273 so I can change this to Kelvin. What's going to be P1 and T1? What's T1? How many Celsius? Yeah, you're going to take what's called the normal boiling point, 100 degrees Celsius or 373 Kelvin. What pressure would I put? Yeah, one atmosphere is fine. And so, you're going to say natural law of P2, the new vapor pressure, is equal to, over 1, is delta H of vaporization. We'll look that up in a second. 1 over T1, uh, 373, minus 1 over T2, uh, 323. Where am I going to find the delta H of vaporization? Back the test. Students in my class, how will you know what's on the back of the test? If you look at my practice exam reader and turn to page three, exam one, give it. Here's delta H vaporization, 44 kilojoules per mole. I can't write 44 though, why? Yeah, it's got to be in joules. So 44,000, that's pretty normal. Um, oh, I was also going to say, let's just think about vaporization for a second. Is that a positive or negative number? Okay, so it's positive. So we're okay that we have a positive number. All right. I would recommend practicing this because a common mistake with your calculator is not doing the anti-lock correctly or not knowing how to do this on the calculator. Please practice ahead of time. I just made it up, so I don't know what the answer is. But you're going to have fun. Practice something like that. Make sure you and your buddy get the same number. 
problem. If, you're, if you don't trust your buddy, use two buddies. All right, next. Forces. All right, we're making good time. Forces is our last topic. Get the questions on this, by the way. All right. Uh, I'm going to... 